Hey, what's up guys? It's Sick and I want to talk to you about how to load one of the chat with this name class plugins for the very first time. We get a lot of questions after somebody loads it, they can't quite figure out what's going on with this window. Okay guys, something that seems to be popping up quite a bit lately is whenever we do an update to the UI window, a lot of folks end up uh, not being able to load it or they load it and then it has a bunch of crazy empty boxes. Now, the reason why this happens is because uh, if you copy the UI file and place it somewhere that's not the default MacroQuest folder, which is the MacroQuest 2 release UI files default, if you've copied it out of there and placed it in either the EverQuest default folder or EverQuest uh, custom UI folder, when we do an update, it's not going to be able to find it. It's going to try to load your old file. So our recommendation and request is to please just not copy the file anywhere and allow MacroQuest to load it from the folder that gets updated whenever we push an update. So with the way that EverQuest works, if you have something that needs to load an XML element, uh, after it knows that it needs to load it, you have to reload the UI for the game to actually load it, right? So this is what that means. So if I do... Um, if I do a slash plugin mq2sk load because I want to load the plugin, I'm going to load that right now. It's going to output. And if you notice at the very top, it said UI file added. You must reload for your UI for this to take effect. Okay. Now, if I do a shad show because I want it to show the UI, it's going to tell me that the window does not exist. Try loading your UI load skin default as an example. Now you can do reload. So I'm gonna do a reload right now. So, uh, okay, so I actually had to reload into the game because the anonymizing function made me crash when I reloaded my UI. But normally you can reload your UI and it'll pop up. Now, if you notice, because of where I put my MQ window for this uh, this video, if I, if I move this uh, and then I maybe unload the plugin, unload, and then I reload it. If you notice, it goes back to where it was before, right? So I had actually moved it a little bit. Um, anyway, it goes back to where it was before. So if I do that again, if I unload this over here and I load it back, it goes back to where it was. Now, there's some technical reasons on why that is the case, but if you wanna save its location, you can move it to where you want it. So let's say I wanted it in this top right-hand corner. Then all I have to do is close the window and then do a shad show and now anytime that the window is shown, it'll load in that position that I have placed it, okay? So what we're actually doing is, is the plugin is allowing EverQuest to place the window. And um, like I said, there's some technical reasons that I don't quite understand exactly why we had issues with the, uh, the internal parts being disjointed from the, uh, the bar itself, but EQ wanted to place the window somewhere. It was saving locations and doing some wacky nonsense and whatever. Anyway, so that's how we do that. So you place it where you want it, then you close it, and then it'll stay there. But let's talk about the overview of the window itself now that we know how to uh, load it. So we load the plugin. It tells us we have to reload our UI. We can either do a slash load skin and load whatever skin we have. Like if we're just using default, we can do slash load skin uh, space default and uh, load it that way. Our other alternatives are just doing a slash reload, which is my personal preference since I do use a custom UI. I'm trying to move this out of the way so I can put this MQ2 window back so we can see the box. So again, those would just be literally a slash reload or a load skin, you know, uh, default or whatever. And then it would reload your your user interface and any other windows that it's been told to load will now be able to load appropriately. Anyway, so I'll move this out of the way. Let me drag this down a little bit just so it's larger. Larger. Okay, so all the windows uh, right now, this is, what is this? This is June 16th of 2020. Now we do a lot of updates to all of the chat with this name stuff. Things are constantly evolving. We're constantly adding new functions and features and customization and stuff we didn't either plan on, we didn't think about, or we had a hard no on and we decided that maybe it was a good idea to do anyway. Um, we're constantly trying to provide a better product. Um, and since we use it as well, it's sometimes we're like, okay, you know what? This is just stupid. Let's, we need, we need something to be able to do this. Um, 
So the window, we have our plugin output. That's this tab here. This spits out all the good infos on just what's happening. Um, you know, if you, you have all the outputs turned on, it's telling you what abilities are being used. You know, if you do a, uh, a whatever your class short name is, and then missing, you know, it'll spout out if you're missing anything, any of the abilities that the plugin is set to, to use or, or is interested in using. Um, uh, and, you know, we can do things like Shad uh, show settings, and it's going to spit out all of our settings here. It's going to show us what everything is set at, even some stuff that's not in the actual UI to adjust. Um, where's an example of something like that? For example, auto drop is on. That's something that's defaulted on. It's not something that people are probably going to want to toggle on and off very frequently. So it's not something that's in this in this uh, settings tab. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of functions in there, uh, right? Well, a lot of different options that you can uh, adjust and whatever that we don't have in the settings tab. Um, but let's go to the settings tab. So in the settings tab on the left hand side, you have things that you put in a numerical value for or a you know, like drop down mode, right? Um, so in, in MQ2SK, we obviously have uh, some of the standard stuff, auto assist at, uh, this doesn't matter since I'm usually tanking, I, like that's ignored. Camp radius, this is my red circle I talk about in my videos all the time. This is if I'm in a tank mode, anything entering that, I'm gonna go bust it up. So, um, your burn count, if, it, if you have burn always, or you have, uh, you know, um, your burn set, it's, it's going to burn when you meet these thresholds, right? So if your burn count is four, um, it's, it's going to do that. Uh, the AOE count does both AOE damaging abilities if you have use AOE on, okay? And this number is also used for AOE count for threat abilities. Now, your AOE threat abilities are used regardless of if you have use AOE on or not. Those threat abilities are only abilities that are not going to break mez. So they don't do any damage, but they're still going to fire, okay? Uh, that's tripped up a couple people before because they said, hey, I have used AOE off, but I'm still using AOE abilities. What's going on? It's because those are your threat abilities and those are still based on AOE count. Um, now, the way we do the AOE count check is we say, hey, what are the number of targets in the range of this particular ability or spell that we want to use? And does that number match the amount we have on our X target? If it's not, we're not going to do it, meaning... If there's, if there's a chance that there's just mobs standing there just chilling, hanging out, minding their own business, they're drinking some tea, watching some Avatar, hanging out with Uncle Iroh, we don't want to go nuking them just because they're in close proximity. So uh, we, we double check against that. Number of X targets is, is greater than or equal to the amount of mobs we have in the range of that ability. And then if so, uh, we're going to do that. Um, and then we have like the class specific stuff, you know, dot mana minimum, uh, feign at aggro, percentage, feign at health, stand on feign at health. Uh, our mode selection and our raid assist number if we have, uh, you know, uh, raid mode turned on. Um, then we have our settings. So what we're trying to go for is we're trying to have all of our, you know, common stuff. We call it chat with this name commons. Uh, we have all of our common stuff in kind of the top, you know, the top section, right? Auto dismount, meaning that um, if you have your mount set to uh, a downtime clicky, we're going to click off the mount, even, but we want the buff from it, right? So it's going to recast the buff from it if we don't have it. Um, let me demonstrate that now. Actually, if I can find it, let me squint because I think I'm going blind, uh, wasting time. Okay, here we go. Uh, mount blessing, Kala, right? So if you noticed... I instantly used my griffin saddle and then I auto dismounted because um, I have it so it auto dismounts. If I have that off, it's gonna say, whoa, buddy, you're missing your mount. We gotta get on this thing, okay? Um, so that's pretty cool. Auto stand on duck, auto stand on fane. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Those are both defaulted to on. Um, I drive with my SK, so I like leaving auto stand on fane turned off. That way, if I want to Thane death something because I want my group to die because they're trash cans and I can't save them. So I'm going to save myself because fuck them. That's why um, I can do that without auto standing on Thane. Now there's some encounters where you want to turn that on. The mob may Thane death you. And if you're just chilling, hanging out, like sleeping in camp, then your group's going to die. And at that time, it's actually your fault. Um, then we have burn all named um, for 
TBL, TOV, and some other some other zones as we start going through stuff and adding things. We have specific uh, a specific name uh, function that we pass through before we go through the macro quest two name function, which checks specific things. So for example, if you're in Kale, uh, you're not going to be burning on every mob that's like, you know, Sergeant fucking Sergeant Talendor. Right? I mean, that's a dragon, that's a bad name. You know what I'm saying. Like Sergeant Dick shit is not going to get burned on unless if he's actually a named because we've, we've put stuff in there to try and eliminate those possibilities. Um, so if you see any names that should be burning that are actual real names, not fake bullshit names, you know, that's something you post up on the thread, let us know and we can, uh, we can correct that right away. I had a couple that somehow I ended up putting them in the wrong zone. So those needed to be fixed, but that was a while ago. Uh, I don't think many people noticed. Uh, we have uh, use alliance raid mode, rank two purchase. The rank two purchase, some people get caught up on. We've had some people think that this rank two purchase somehow exploits the game and makes it you so you can use rank twos even though you can't. That is not what it is at all. Um, in the marketplace, there is a rank two unlocker. Uh, unlocker. Rank. Where is it? Okay, this marketplace sucks, okay? Um, spell, it's like spell rank increase or something, right? Yeah, here we go, okay, I was looking at it, I'm, I'm blind. Okay, so this ability will, uh, this will grant you the ability to scribe and cast rank two spells, character only specific and only to the character on which you buy this unlock, okay? So what this unlocker is, is if you've purchased this, you can be silver and be using uh, rank two spells. Um, so this is just a way for us to say, hey, you've purchased this rank two thing from the marketplace and you would like to use the rank two spells, uh, then click that so we can make sure we're checking the correct stuff when we're doing all of our spell checks uh, for buffing and what abilities to use and, and all of that stuff. So we're not trying to use abilities you don't have access to. Um, then obviously we have use AOE. If you want to use AOE abilities or not, again, that does not, that does not turn off um, only aggro generating abilities if it happens to generate aggro but it also does damage if it's like a whirlwind of death and it cuts everyone in half and you have this turned off we're not going to do that because that's not nice uh use glyph self-explanatory use stick self-explanatory sometimes if you're in a, a, a you, you know you're in a tight spot and your dudes are getting stuck on the wall trying to s stick behind a mob you can just turn that off and they're just going to nav to the mob and start fighting it um, summon remains now we're getting into the class specific stuff so this stuff i, I explained in the uh in the shadow knight uh the or excuse me the mq2 sk video so i'm not going to get into those those are all class specific um we recently decided to change all of the things to try and be a little bit more consistent and we're really working on that consistency so as we build we don't get all over the place and we're going to be trying to use things like do okay i just added use disarm to everything because apparently on TLP, I never knew this. Disarm actually throws your weapons on the ground. The ground? Like, happy birthday to the fucking ground. Oh, you have a sword? Let me throw it on the ground. Um, it, I guess if they're magic, it goes in your inventory or some shit, but we're apparently on TLP, we were just knocking weapons on the ground. Everyone's like, where's the weapons? Uh, sorry. So I got that fixed for you guys. I'm sorry about that. I, I had no idea. Um, but so we're trying to use use for everything, right? So for classes that have like, uh, we want to provide an option to turn off melee, like, uh, you know, Enchanter when that when that comes around or Shaman or uh, MQ2 Cleric, for example, um, it'll be use melee and you can turn use melee on or off. And we'll have for some of those classes where those are like secondary to their kind of primary function, like a healer being healing or whatever, we're going to have options like use nuke, use dot, use heal, use fireworks or whatever. All right. Pulling tab. Now this pulling tab, um, we're going to be giving it a revamp. I'm probably gonna snip to it a little bit from now and show you what, just kind of a quick mock mock up of what it's going to look like. We're gonna be get, getting rid of these sliders. The sliders don't offer a lot of granular um, kind of adjustment ability. You know, it's, it's not as hard here when it's like, you know, zero to a hundred or whatever. Oh, it can't be less than that, yeah. Um, but when we're doing like pull radius or Z radius, and this thing goes up to like 5,000, trying to like land on, you know, if you wanna do 800 or something, like good luck trying to get to 800. And we didn't have a box to be able to, you know, type it into. So you'd have to do a slash command anyway. You'd have to go like shad uh, radius 800 to change it to the 800. Um, now the problem with that is the window 
the UI we have designed so these are like quote unquote hot swaps, right? These are like hot setting adjustments. These don't save. So if I if I click on I want to uh, not auto dismount, it's going to continue not auto dismounting for the rest of the duration of this uh, time that I'm logged in. When I log out and log back in, it's going to go back to whatever the whatever it is in my INI, which if you use a slash command to set that, it's going to save it to your INI. The window does not save your settings. And we again, we do that on purpose so you can adjust stuff for whatever you're doing and then not have to try and worry about adjusting stuff later. Um, which is why I always do recommend when you're logging out, you know, hit your camp off button so you go mode zero. So when you come back in, all your dudes aren't like camped in one spot or they're auto chasing you or running around everywhere, that kind of thing. Um, just so if you were, you know, using this to adjust on the fly, um, they'll be they'll be back in a, in a good spot based on their I and I when they log back in. Um, anyway, so we recently added uh, pull arc and uh, pull level minimum, pull level maximum. Now, this is, again, this is something that uh, we experienced ourselves on the new TLP Rizlona, and we received some feedback about as well. The pull level stuff, uh, originally we're like, well, just why are you in an area that you're pulling stuff you don't want to pull? That's stupid. But uh, we went to Rizlona, and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to kill this, like, level 2 snake, and there's, uh, I decide to run to uh, a level 30 hill giant that, for some reason, is chilling there. And uh, that didn't really work out so great. So, um, you know, you're going to be able to select what level uh, you want for uh, minimum and maximum. And then we have our pull arc. Uh, okay, so I just want to uh, pull our tank mode, as you can see here. I'm going to pop up my, uh, my thing, my map. Okay, now let's do shad radius. Like, let's do a really small radius just so we can see what's going on. So I have a radius of... Uh, 100 from us so it's 100 radius in a 360 degree arc now if I change this let's say I want to do 180 arc that's going to do from the direction that I'm facing and it's going to go out that uh, that same radius so it's going to go out 100 and then do the circle 100 and uh, what's crazy rad about this is if I go uh, if I go mode eight, if I go in hunter tank mode, I'm only going to roam around in that section and kill stuff in that section. Um, so that's the purpose of this pull arc here. Um, it's a very new feature. Not a lot of people have had a lot of experience on uh, messing with it yet. Um, but see, you can do like a 90 and again, you know, it goes 100 out. 100 out draws that and then we're hunting just in this section this is particularly useful if you're in a dungeon and you don't want to go to like the room behind you but you want to go you know stuff in front of you you can kind of set that and um it works incredibly well chat spent a lot of time uh being able to figure out how to do this because uh it it, it was a pain in the ass uh i sat with him when we were doing it and uh there were some there were some laughs and some tears probably a little bit of blood and uh, a whole lot of swearing that happened too um but anyway so this defaults to uh 360 just, you know pulling a regular circle around us um this is going to get swapped to a uh, a simple window which i guess i will uh maybe i'll pop over to now um let's do that actually Okay, so this is how it's kind of kind of look. Obviously, it's not complete, and um, the stuff isn't added in here, so these are actually not functional in this in this mode. But I just want to kind of show you what we're we're kind of going for. So a, a lot of folks like like putting this somewhere where it's nice and small, and they can just see some output, and maybe they can adjust their settings on the fly. So like we have here, uh, this now scrolls to the side, and this scrolls up and down, and then the pulling tab will be nice and compact. Um, so you'll be able to still drop down and select your group watch. But then you'll be able to just plug in what you want your, you know, mana, hit points, um, endurance, uh, and then all of your pull information over here. So again, this is just a quick mock-up. It's obviously not populated or working, um, but this is kind of where we're at. So I just want to kind of put this video together, kind of explain how to load the window, talking about the window, um, mentioning that it doesn't save your settings. You have to use a slash command if you want it to save to your INI. Um, and just kind of go through all of the rest of the stuff. 
So I will talk to you guys soon.